is not unique to an international border, that it is something that is profound and on a daily basis, and particularly over time, can have a real impact on your view of the future. When I first saw the white tents, it just it, it hit me so hard that these people um, are, have lives, these people um, have a future like you and I. The coverage in the news and media is so impersonal. And I think I probably represent a lot of us here who had almost no, I've never, never I've been to the Middle East before. I had no context for displacement or the, you know, what it means to be displaced. And um, I was so frustrated with how media was portraying it because, you know, often what media does is they'll go into a refugee camp, they have a story in mind, they, they'll literally ask, so can you find me someone who's lost their leg or been shot? And, you know, they'll, they'll tell a story that they want to tell. I think really the question is, how do we motivate people to want to listen to the stories or hear them or see them or read them? My colleagues are on the ground on a daily basis, working directly with people, trying to respond under incredibly limited and harsh conditions. And I think that even in the response, um, people who are working directly with other people feel that need to really actually take a step back and humanize. And, you know, asking the question of how many untold stories there are, there are millions of them for every single person who has been displaced. Resolving the situation, resolution, numbers are really what we're up against a lot of the time. I, I, I have to be frank about that. And um, it makes it really difficult. I mean, as a human rights activist, we do approach it one to, on a one-to-one -one basis. My UNHCR colleague, has to grapple with those enormously large numbers. And Bill, um, given the demands of the humanitarian challenge of displacement, who is thinking about the long-term future of refugees? We try to push for what are called durable solutions. So that, that is to say, ideally, as a human rights organization, we want people to go back to return to their homes, to go back to, to um, rightfully reclaim the, lost, um, uh, the, the losses that they, that they suffered um, and, and to restore their rights to live in dignity and to live in peace um, as they did before. You know, finding on an individual basis a legal, a legal relief that that person becomes recognized as a citizen in another country, is given asylum, and is able to start a new life. It doesn't resolve the underlying loss. In that person's heart, they're always an exile. In that person's heart, they're always a refugee. You know, even peeling back the refugee question for a little while, and that's why I mean, Zach's work, sitting down and living with people and, and seeing that on a daily basis and getting to know what it's like, connecting to communities um, through social media, through other ways, actually just getting to know someone not because she's a refugee, but because she's another human being. I think that's a really, um, I think it's a really important thing, and I think it's a challenge that anyone in the humanitarian world faces. The kinds of, of experiences people have are, are, are just horrific, um, and we document that. And it's tough, it is tough to do, but it is, it is very personalized, and that's because human rights abuses are just that. I mean, one, you know, one person that's tortured is, uh, is, is, you know, is an enormous rights violation that harms society. It's true that being in a situation like one of displacement or forced exile or, or war, for example, um, I mean, it's obviously, it's not something you'd, you'd wish on anybody, right? But it is true that when you find yourself in that situation, I think the sense of displacement from within your, nor your own sense of normality actually opens up vistas and perspectives on, on the entire world. I mean, I mean, I can speak partly, uh, I don't have an experience as a refugee, but I grew up in a war in Lebanon, so I know that from my own background, uh, there's something about going through a horrific experience like that that makes you see the world anew. Allah, as a young person, we actually look to your generation uh, because you're our future leaders. And I wonder, what is your vision for the future? I'd like to picture it as if we're in a 
long, dark tunnel, but at the end of it, there is life. 